welcome to this video round six coverage of the candidates tournament and the game to analyze and this video is to Parlov against Kromnik yeah very important game for the further course of the tournament of that's obvious Kromnik is uh, playing black to Parlov is on minus one he needs to put some pressure and uh, try to yeah get a win somewhere to get into the race for for the first place everything else is pretty much useless in this tournament well Kramnik is on plus one and it's basically okay the score he uh, certainly does not want to lose especially not against uh, his yeah against against Topalov who is uh, they, they are still not on speaking terms and don't shake each other's head, hand and so on which is uh, quite understandable after the events in 2006 in um, in Elishta. um it's okay no, so let's uh, look at the game queen's gambit declined yeah not a big surprise kromnik is uh, playing that as his main defense combined with the nimzo against g4 and uh, topalov i mean okay he can also play e4 certainly but um, really e4 against the berlin wall again yeah so people very often go for d4 against Kromnik because they know that his defenses against d4 are so terribly solid. So mostly d4 is played. Look at Arnand, he played d4 as well. Okay, bishop e7, the classical this time, not the Vienna variation or this invitation uh, for this line that Kromnik played against Arnand. Here he's playing bishop e7, which is really his main move, the, the classical. Bishop f4 also very much to be expected. Tupalov really has a terrible score with the Laska variation, losing two crucial games against um, Arnand in the World Championship match and right after that in another tournament. It's a super solid line for Black, so um, it's not really... Uh, that There are not so many players who are keen to try to get something out of that. And Tupalov really, I mean, if he wants to win a game, it's this game. It's, he needs a win for the tournament and he certainly wants to beat Kromnik like no other guy on the planet. So, um, yeah, bishop f4 is the fighting move. Castles, e3, knight bd7. Everything to be expected. Knight bd7 nowadays is the main line of the bishop f4 queen's gambit. And, um, yeah, here Topalov goes for c5, which... Um, I personally always believe to be the critical move in from a principal point of view um people have also tried many other moves here a3 for example h3 rook c1 these kind of moves against all of that black is always going for c5 and uh, we get this type of pawn structure it's only a matter of uh, what white has played it's sometimes with the pawn on a3 pawn on h3 or any other move um, basically what we get is an isolated queen pawn position where black relatively quickly with moves like bishop g4 knight e6 and bishop f6 starts to fight for the d4 square and very often we get positions here that are quickly simplified to draw his end games um, this is not in topalov's interest he plays c5 the more aggressive move and also the move after which he has obviously prepared something and we see that right now after knight h5 which is um, um, an expected move Kramnik has played this before in more than one game he played bishop to e5 which is um, almost a novelty there are very little games with that the normal way to play here is for white to just allow the capture and go for this structure leading to a positional type of game where it's questionable or let's say uh, i need to i need to phrase it uh, differently this is a game type of game where black is uh, very close to equalize in the long run but white can apply some pressure it's not uh, like black is uh, is shaking uh, yeah and uh, it's uh, afraid of getting mated quickly but uh, still some problems to solve Topalov forever wants more he wants to really get in a surprise so he plays the move 
bishop e5. And uh, as he said, after the game, it was meant to be um, a surprise for just a single game, as he don't believe that this move is uh, objectively so great. Um, we see a bit later why this might not be so great, but uh, let's see. c6, very normal move. Black can consider, of course, to take the bishop, but um, his rationale is that he can always take it and does not need to do so right away. Um, I guess that's a fair point. c6, and now bishop d3 by the part of very normal looking move. Yeah, g6 played by Kromnik, still quickly played. It's not like he was uh, thinking too long on that. And uh, this is a good universal move. It protects the knight, which sometimes can be a problem. It protects h7 in case of white ever initiating something on this diagonal. And it provides um, a possible retreat square for the knight, should it be attacked with g4. Yeah, this is all very normal looking. And now Topalov quickly played the move h4. And um, I believe here, really early, we already have a critical position for this game. Kromnik now thought for a while and played f5. Yeah, Look at this, about 13 minutes. Um, actually, I'm surprised that at this moment he... Um, he didn't capture on e5 because after h4, I think this is really the move um, to look at. I can I can show you some lines. Knight takes e5. I believe that white will probably take with the knight. Um, D takes e5 at first looks completely ridiculous as you give up this pawn, but uh, it still needs to be checked briefly because after the bishop capture, there is this idea. And this is not... Uh, this is not entirely clear. I mean, white has uh, obviously made some progress on the king side. But uh, on the other hand, um, you don't really feel like it should be a winning mating attack or something like that. It is, it is maybe dangerous in a practical game. It's very hard to, um, hard to evaluate. The computer prefers black, but uh, I, I wouldn't um, give so... Yeah, I wouldn't um, be so sure that uh, this is uh, necessarily true. White has really made some progress on the king side. This is not a silly idea, d takes e5. It's uh, something to uh, consider, um, especially if you look at the position after knight takes e5, which is the normal recapture, certainly. After that, I think that black can play f6, and uh, I'm not sure what happens after that. Knight f3, the simple kind of move, is just answered by e5. And here, I'm pretty sure that black is just better. He has gained the two bishops and now uh, pushed in the center. It's not clear what white is doing next move. I mean, e4 is a threat and the capture is uh, certainly uh, good for black. Something like that starts to look real silly for white. What is h4 doing? What is the knight doing? It's um, simply a bad position. Um, yeah, I believe that uh, f6, the, the thing that probably has um, yeah, made Kromnik uh, not playing the capture is knight takes g6. And this is indeed an interesting move. Something like that is one possibility. Where I'm not positive uh, that, uh, yeah, let's say I, I really don't know what to make out of this position. I mean, I feel like black must be okay, but it's not uh, really a position that you probably would love to play. You're under attack and you know that the opponent has prepared something. So, yeah, interesting. Queen g4 is another move that uh, might, be, might be interesting. Something like that. Check. And the h-pawn is, um, is coming coming down the board just from my feeling yeah my intuition tells me that this should be okay for black but it's not something that you would love to play in a practical game against Topalov who has prepared it so it's understandable maybe that Kromnik is not uh, playing it but maybe it was also just 
the principled uh, way to go. That's uh, that's possible. After f5, Topalov played, I believe, uh, a good move. He played bishop to h2, just retreating the bishop from e5. This is uh, something that is very often very helpful. That white is um, just keeping this uh, this uh, this bishop. Yeah, we we are at an interesting point now. Kromnik played the move b6 after some thought. Um, if you look at the position, there is a, a very simple question that you can ask yourself. What exactly is happening if black is taking the pawn? It looks like a terribly materialistic move. I mean, just grabbing this uh, this h4 pawn. Um, but if you look at it, I mean, when I watched the, the live broadcast, um, I saw some of it. Um, I, I actually never considered this. It looks just about uh, just strange to 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 get this bishop to h4. I mean, it's a pawn, but um, it's still looking like a strange move. But in fact, if you analyze it, I mean, white has no refutation in a way. It cannot uh, white cannot um, play any great tactic or um, sort of yeah exploit this uh, this situation here on the h file with those funky pieces here. Um, it seems that after that, white is just playing uh, like yeah like nothing has happened. And to play something like b4 or castle, this is at least how the computer approaches the position. And funny enough, it gives white um, a certain advantage here, like more than enough compensation for a pawn, which uh, I find uh, personally quite amazing. I I don't know if if I if you give me black here, I, I don't I don't really think I would uh, believe that the other side has more than enough compensation. Maybe he has some compensation. He's got good pieces and he has a relatively easy uh, plan. But um, yeah, an advantage, I don't know. Um, I understand though why Kromnik didn't take it. I mean, it's it's not a very comfortable position to play. White is certainly, um, yeah, an easy to play game here. Still, it would have been principled, just grab the pawn. He played b6, which is in fact the strategically normal move. b4, white must protect his uh, pawn on c5, of course. Yeah, and here we are at a position where um, the capture is not possible actually anymore, as b5 is a strong reply. After b5, black cannot take, c6 is uh, getting, yeah, it's not getting ugly, it's, it's just a lost position already. The knight simply has nowhere to go. Um, yeah, okay, you can go here, but uh, well, here's your bishop. So uh, this is not possible. Bishop b7 must be played. And then queen a4 is just very strong. As after this, this there is simply the queen being overloaded. It must watch over the d7 knight and the h4 uh, bishop. So this is loss of material already. Yeah, of course, Kromnik didn't take. He decided to play the move f4, which is, um, yeah, I don't know. It's very committal, very committal, pushing this pawn. I mean, it, it does one thing. It limits the bishop for the moment. The bishop is not an exceptionally great piece now. But on the other hand, it's also, yeah, making, uh, I don't know how to call it, this is, was a stone ball, and now it is, I don't know, paper wall. It, it's, it's very, it, there are many weaknesses um, of this move. If you just consider that at a later stage, those pawns will be uh, exchanged against each other after white is uh, taking, uh, has taken probably, then the six pawn will get weak. C6 might be an issue. So F4 is really a very committal move. And uh, probably not a great one. I don't really uh, see how after f4 um, Kromnik is um, is getting a really um, um, fine position anymore. It seems that White is uh, is is better after that. So Palov castled, and now a5 was played. And a5, yeah. To be honest, after a5, I think Black is lost. I don't think. Uh, you can you can save the game after this move. 
but I'm not really sure what he should play. Um, there are already uh, lots of problems with the various continuations. If you um, consider a very active move, like e5 for example, certainly a move you, you want to play, you want to play actively, but after the capture, here white has the strong reply b5, very important, and now he undermines the center after b5, um, white is yeah, in excellent shape. The problem is you get this pawn to c6 and uh, how does black um, ever going to uh, to win the pawn or, or play around it um, in a decent fashion? I don't see how. A normal looking move like this is for example answered by bishop a6 and you don't really um, get anywhere here. White is, um, it seems, just better. This is... Um, better than the game though but um, still it's not uh, it's not great yeah what about solid uh, solid moves like this yeah i can do that but look at that g4 knight retreats and h5 this uh, kind of uh, approach it, l it looks a bit insane but i mean you have played h4 and uh, you might as well make some sense out of that um, the problem is simply that white has more pieces on the king side or can switch more pieces to the king side. So g4, h5 is not weakening white's king. It's just a good attacking um, attacking motif. Black should take, for instance, there's queen c2. And uh, yeah, black is not uh, going, to, going to survive this. Just for argument's sake, if you look at Check. this. And knight e5. Yeah, there's this threat in the mix and something like that. White will quickly get the queen involved and uh, just win with a kingside attack. Yeah, I mean, black is, it's really not uh, not great to play this position, no doubt about it. Yeah, well, Kromnik went for, for a5 and after b5, which is uh, entirely logical, um, yeah, it's really a problem. What should Black play now? He took on uh, on c5, but um, other moves, yeah, well, they don't they don't um, fare well as well. Bishop b7, for example. White has, I mean, more than one interesting continuation. But even if you just keep it simple, like take two times and play queen e2, white is just threatening to take and to take on e6. And black's position is, is just, is just um, so weak here with those pawns. If you could play uh, f4, f5 here as black, you would actually improve your position considerably. I mean, white still would be better, but um, with the queen side open. But uh, this is uh, completely unplayable. White um, is, is almost winning as uh, he has no defense to, uh, to the capture or e4. e4 is also a substantial threat. Yeah, it's uh, it's really black is in big trouble. He took here and after that dropped the knight back. Yeah, it looks terrible to put the knight uh, back on, uh, on b8. But um, yeah, where else to go? If you go to b6, where exactly is this knight heading? Um, a move like rook b1, for example, no, no. You, you can try something like that, but at the end there's always this pawn. Black can never take as it would open up the bishop. And uh, white has ideas like knight to e5, attacking uh, too, many, too many arrows, like knight e5, attacking the, the knight here, or queen c2, knight e5, taking on g6. And black has no play at all. He, he always has this pawn to, uh, to that, that ties him up. In comparison, I think Kromnik's move is, uh, is better, but uh, it's still a terrible sight, this pawn on c6 that is protected by the bishop. Yeah, and um, after those moves, yeah, this is probably uh, the relatively best chance. You'd need to get the pawn. But there is a tactical issue, but there's no way anymore that Kromnik can avoid it. He managed to get the c6 pawn, 
but now there's knight takes d5. It's not like he overlooked this tactic. It's simply that black uh, was um, was in uh, in almost hopeless shape anywhere. Uh, anyway, what what else are you playing here if you not take on c5? Yeah, move like that. Just a disaster. White keeps this, and uh, the whole position queen g4 coming. Yeah, it's an amazingly bad position. So knight takes d5 was allowed by black because of uh, yeah lack of alternatives. Took check, and now white took on on c6. Yeah, and uh, from being a pawn down, white has now one material after this uh, trade. Black could have taken on f1, but it's not really uh, helping much. White can take the rook here. And after this uh, this retreat, just uh, keep the bishop. Yeah, in the game we had uh, something something similar actually. Black got uh, got this pawn, but white was uh, able to gain the a5 pawn. Check. And this is all quite normal, and yeah, now we have an end game with white having the b pawn extra, and this is um, obviously a great pawn to have. I mean. It's it's supported by this uh, this sniper bishop on h2, so um, black is basically yeah in, in hopeless condition here, and it's very simple um, technical play by white just rook b1 to support the pawn. Check. And, um, yeah, it is Check. pushed now. Check. And um, yeah, well you don't need to be rated two thousand eight hundred to. To win this game, White is just uh, just pushing his pawn. Check. Yeah, and here he's attacking this this knight from the side. There's no way to to stop the pawn anymore. If Black goes uh, back here, White check. can still only uh, simply give this check and uh, promote next move. Check. Yeah, he gave gave check. some checks, and after King e three. Resigned the game. It's uh, impossible to to stop the b pawn simply. Yeah, a very very tough loss for Kromnik and uh, yeah, I, I I'm not sure. I mean the the Russian um, um the, the Russian language uh, commentator for the <clears throat> official side said that uh, this basically ends Kromnik's uh, ambitions in this tournament. Yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it does. I mean it's it's really he's on fifty percent now. Which um, is not not brilliant in itself, but uh, the way the game went is really, really uh, devastating. Especially considering that he lost like that against Lopalov. Um, I mean, he also would have been uh, less than enthusiastic if this would would have been against a friend of uh, of him, like like uh, like like Arnand or, or whatever. But um, it's it's simply a devastating loss. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, well, may maybe he still has a chance. I mean, fifty percent is not the end of the world. It's just uh, one point uh, behind Arnand. At least uh, for the round, Arnand was on plus two. Um, yeah, and Topalov is back in the in the race. I mean, if you say that he's back in the race, why shouldn't uh, Kramnik be still in it? Um, Topalov now on fifty percent, he bounced back from this uh, loss, and certainly this is a win that might. Uh, yeah, boost his uh, confidence as he uh, managed to beat his uh, arch rival. Um, yeah, and it was it was a good game. Certainly, he um, got in an interesting opening preparation. I guess uh, the real the real crisis in this game was was very very early. Even after this, I mean, probably around here, it is where Black needs to improve. After a five, really quickly, I think. We come to a point where Black's uh, position probably was um, was beyond repair, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I believe that really Kromnik has uh, some maybe some uh, psychological issues if he when he plays to part off. I don't know. It's it's obviously not a normal game for for both players because of the the events back in two thousand six, but. Um, it feels like Kromnik is affected more by that. This was also stated by uh, commentators during the game, and uh, I, I thought about that, and maybe this is really the case. I mean, it's very uncus, very uncus, 
uncharacteristic uh, of him to have so many weaknesses after 30 moves. Just look at the position. And he has so many pawns that are weak, c6, e6. The whole position is full of weaknesses. He has a decentralized knight. And uh, normally his play is really um, a display of, of harmony. And somehow, I don't know, he is maybe distracted by this um, this um, this negative and, and tense atmosphere that he has when he plays uh, against uh, Topalov. People react differently to uh, to situations where they play someone they they really dislike. I mean, uh, they are very... Uh, there are people that are absolutely not affected at all. They just play a normal game. But um, I know, I mean, I, I personally, I like to play against uh, people that I like. I don't know. I mean, it, it feels good to me and I, I, I'm, I'm more creative. And um, if I play someone I really don't like so much, uh, it, it sometimes really, it affects me negatively. I don't know how exactly, but it, it's not helpful to me. It's um, contrary to what uh, what uh, what Fischer said that he he really needs to dislike the opponent and wants to crush him and this kind of stuff. Um, it's um, it's not necessary really to 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 fear that uh, kind of uh, things towards your opponent. Yeah, well, it's hard to hard to say. This is all like uh, amateur psychology or psychoanalysis, something like that. Okay, so um, nevertheless, an interesting game, and I hope you liked the coverage of it. Thanks for watching.